With the invention of the internet and social media, the nature of human communication has changed. Today, rather than speak over the phone, people will text, Facebook, and tweet. In one day alone, 340 million tweets will be sent, 300 million pictures will be uploaded via Instagram, and one out of every seven minutes online will be spent on Facebook. From a young age, people are posting anything and everything online. And as our methods of communication have become revolutionized, we each have gained a new potential, the power of building a digital footprint. Your digital footprint is essentially the, um, your online presence, and it's, it's beyond the it's beyond your profile information, but it's really about the how you are represented in an online space. Instead of being in this small bubble of, I just am on Facebook and I talk to my 30 friends on Facebook and that's who I think sees and knows me, um, it can turn into this creation of who I am. I think that's really what it comes down to is what you do online is part of your identity. It didn't used to be that way. It didn't, your identity was who you are as a physical person, but now you have this virtual element. It's an amazing positive platform. It is not the conversation you have in your, in your kitchen. It's not the conversation you have in your basement or in your living room uh, or in the hallways. That's not what it's for on a positive level, what it can be for. It's broader, it's broader in scale. It gives more information about me. And so as students are coming up, and learning more and publishing more kinds of things online, if they don't manage their own footprint, they're ultimately, they're going to have a false sense of themselves and people will get a false sense of them. The best things happen on Facebook. It's permanent, so if someone's gonna look at that, then you want to have a good reputation because if you have a bad reputation with photos or drugs or anything like that online, then it's stuck there. Once or twice a month I go through and I delete Facebook friends or I delete stuff that I'm not proud of years ago that I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was naive, I did that a while back. And then I delete all that and then I probably go through it and update information. I add more information if I need to, but not, I mean, not too much, not like obsessively, but enough that I know that I have a clean slate. All the stuff I liked back in middle school, I've been, you know, actively trying to get rid of that because I guess the way you use the social media changes as you grow up with it. So now it's not just like, oh, ha ha, I like potatoes. <laughs> like just trying to have some level of professionalism, even for something as dorky as just like whatever comes to mind with my post. I want to censor that a little bit. With the number of social media sites growing every year, figuring out how to manage your digital footprint can be overwhelming. However, Liz Grana and Don Goebel have some advice on the first steps you can take to begin the construction. You want to first, I think, know how to navigate it safely with integrity and being kind and being respectful, but also knowing that following something, liking something, agreeing with something means that you support it and that your name is behind it and that you're involved with it. So I would increase the privacy settings on everything that I had. Then I'd create multiple accounts. I'd create a new account with my name on it. Put your name on it. If you don't put your name on it and you're anonymous, it doesn't mean anything. Put your face on it. Upload your picture. Uh, tell the world, this is me. This is who I am. So create a new Facebook profile. Create a new Twitter profile. Create a, whatever Instagram. Your name, exactly who you are and what you want to accomplish in your life. That should be your description. That should be your profile. And then start populating it with all the wonderful things you are personally doing, or all the wonderful things your friends are doing, or all the wonderful things that you see others doing that you would like to uh, see more of. You have the power to create that type of a footprint digitally if you put the right stuff online. So if you're an athlete, if you're involved in music, if you're involved in writing, all of those types of things you can make a positive thing um, online where if someone Googles you when you're trying to get into college or they Google you when you're trying to get a job, you have all of this information that shows who you are in such a positive way. While you should be cautious about the content you post and carefully manage your digital reputation, do not be hesitant about creating a digital footprint, as a well-managed digital footprint is a powerful tool. 
Will Richardson says it really well when he says, you want strangers to be able to find you online, which is a little weird and creepy and all that at first, but if you really think about it, that's how you represent yourself. I think a powerful tool in anybody's career, let alone life, is to reflect. And when we blog, when we tweet, um, when we put our thoughts down on, on paper or via the internet, we have a chance to reflect, we have a chance to grow. And when we hear what other people think about that, it gives us a chance to reflect on our opinions and our ideas about things. You get out of life what you put into it. So if you're putting out negativity, slander, bullying, um, you know, just sour attitude, that's what you're gonna get back in return. And it's completely evident on a social media site. So let's flip that. Let's be positive. Let's share our positive talents, our positive attributes. Let's share all the wonderful things those that we're close to are doing. Let's share all the wonderful things that we've read and we would love others to read and reflect upon. On its own Facebook page, Facebook states that its mission is to make the world more open and connected. Twitter describes itself as the simplest way to stay close to everything you care about. Both these websites and other social media platforms have made our world a more connected place. But they have done even more than that. They have given us each the opportunity to share our ideas with others, to grow from interactions with people we have never met, and to build a global reputation. In the coming years, as we continue to navigate how to represent ourselves online, the role of the digital footprint will continue to develop as well. But one thing is for sure, if you manage it well, your digital footprint can be one of your greatest opportunities.